With a career that spans more than five decades, the incomparable Judy Woodruff is one of the most trusted broadcast journalists of our time. In a world where opinion programs and personalities often dominate the media landscape, Judy has earned her reputation for delivering unbiased and fact-based news stories without any hype. Judy began her reporting career in local news at WAGA-TV in Atlanta in 1970, covering the Georgia State Legislature. Her political reporting quickly drew attention and she went on to NBC, CNN, and PBS, where she covered the White House and the major stories of our time with her precision and her commitment to the essential standards of journalism. She has moderated numerous presidential debates and has covered every presidential campaign and convention since 1976. In 2013, Judy Woodruff and Gwen Ifill were the first two women to co-anchor a national news broadcast in the U.S. with the PBS News Hour. And after Gwen Ifill's passing in 2016, Judy became the sole anchor and managing editor. A mentor to many young journalists, Judy is founding co-chair of the International Women's Media Foundation, which promotes women in journalism and communications worldwide. She's tireless in her commitment to public service, which reaches beyond television, and has dedicated her platform and her voice as a mother to the empowerment of people with disabilities. Throughout her career, Judy has been an outspoken advocate of the First Amendment, upholding the importance of a free and unfettered press as critical to the survival of our democracy. No wonder then that with Judy fronting the nightly news, PBS has been recognized as the country's most trusted public institution. Judy Woodruff's trailblazing career is a testament to many things, to the fierce strength of a woman in a male-dominated field, to the professional craft of writing and reporting, and to our collective experience of American history and politics. But above all, Judy Woodruff is a testament to the discipline of telling the truth to the public. Thank you, Judy, thank you. We are proud to salute you with the first ever Peabody Award for Journalistic Integrity. Congratulations. Judy Woodruff reports from the Capitol. Tomorrow, a discussion of the credibility of the news media with a better idea of what state government is doing about the problems that characterize the age we live in. After the news summary, we have four main focuses on the news hour tonight. Before she left Washington, President Aquino sat down with Judy Woodruff to ask uh, foreign investors to come in, at the same time not overlooking the interests of the Filipino people. How can you do that, though? Doesn't that at some point become contradictory? Yeah, I mentioned the deficit cut. People say, well, how in the world is he going to do that and go ahead with a stimulus package of over $200 billion, infrastructure, well, jobs. See, that's what makes it tougher. That and the middle income tax. We're going to have to cut more in other places. Nancy Reagan, thank you very much for talking with us. You're very welcome. On this, the first night of the new PBS NewsHour, we have a lot of news for you. Downton Abbey coming to an end, inequality, discrimination, and you bring your own set of views. Do you think Downton contributes to, to the conversation, to the discussion of that? I adore these questions because they're always asked in such optimism. Welcome to the PBS NewsHour Politico-Democratic Presidential Debate. Senator, my question is, will you support this deal? And if not, why not? Mr. Vice President, what is your argument to the voter watching this debate tonight why they should make a change? Secretary Clinton, did you think at this stage of your life you would still be having to, to fight this fight? It is still uh, a very big challenge to women of all ages, but particularly young women. I sat down with Vice President Pence at the White House earlier today. Do you think that it was appropriate for the President of the United States to bring up a political rival? We can't really count on that because all we have from the committee are leaks. It wasn't leaked. It was in his statement that he released. This day has seen the inauguration of Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. as the 46th President of the United States. Thank you all and good night. Thank you to the inimitable one and only Jane Fonda, and thank you to the Peabody jurors for this award. 
that means so much to me. That it's coming from the university in the state where I started out as a reporter, and to be receiving it after a year like no other makes it all the more special. A year spent broadcasting from home, something we never would have imagined before COVID. You asked me to reflect on my career. It was possible for me to get through 2020 because of what I've learned over a lifetime. First, my NewsHour colleagues. I am beyond blessed to work with such a tireless, dedicated group of people who care more than anything about doing good journalism. Second, waking up every day and remembering we serve the American people and they need reliable information. It's as simple and as complicated as that. There were plenty of times when I felt I'd lost the roadmap, but I owed it to the audience, who'd also lost theirs, to keep looking for answers. Our democracy doesn't function unless we have a robust press asking hard questions, demanding explanations, whether it's the pandemic, politics, the country's reckoning over race, or China. The questions flowed. They became our marching orders. And finally, in this moment when we are as deeply divided as we've been, not taking sides, but clearly we need to stand up to those who say we're fake news or enemies of the American people just because we report things they don't want to hear. Stand up to them, not by being drawn into a personal back and forth, but by doing our job, never being cowed. We do not do fake news. And in this, staying humble, never assuming I have all the answers, always realizing I can learn something from the people I cover. In an unexpected way, even as the pandemic kept us away from people, it also drew us to them. Technology allowed us to be as close as their laptops or phones. They could and can talk openly to us about losing a loved one, suddenly having to teach their own children, losing their job, or worry their business might go under. Ever since I started out as a reporter, what I've cared about the most has been getting all the facts, getting the story straight, making sure all sides are heard. I haven't always met my own standards. I've fallen short plenty of times, either in haste or because I didn't make that extra call or read that extra document. What I know is just as the world has grown more complicated and our politics more divided, we have never more needed a strong press. I am so grateful for this award and all the awards you bestow right now because they shine a light on what matters.